Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic, and this is another reaction to Origairu or Faku or whatever it is named. Uh, so, second episode. And the first one was already really good. You know what to do. If you want to see the second one, the reaction itself, go down into my descriptions, follow the links, replace the circumflex.parts with real dots, and enjoy. And once you've done, feel free to come back here and hear my thoughts about this episode. So, see you soon. For those that came back, welcome back. Nice episode, right? I mean, <clears throat> it's focusing around a different theme in the main part, but the uh, beginning is still about the class life, the personal life. Um, Ofiki of um, Yui as well, uh, Yui Gahama. That was interesting. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I catched everything, but I think there's some interesting stuff going on in their class life and I'm pretty sure we will learn more about that especially with some of the characters we've just met now so let's see um, we started off with this once again an interesting theory of Hickey so we had that in the last episode already where he thought about um, where is his position in life uh, that he hates girls why he does and so on um, and this time he was about herbivores and herbivores, uh, so the idea of um, carnivores and herbivores, that's it, sorry. The idea of um, that some of his class comrades are like carnivores, so flesh eaters, or meat eaters, but in this case it would be like flesh eaters, that they're dangerous, you know, the alphas, the one that if you don't look out they will eat you, which is kind of like they will destroy your life. So they are the winners, and if you compete with them or try to compete with them, you will be kind of destroyed. And then there are those who are um, plant eaters who try to just be friendly to, in, uh, to each other, don't um, try to anger the carnivores, and that. And I thought that was interesting. Sometimes they feel sad about having to sacrifice one of their own to the the carnivores which makes sense um i mean if you think if you see it like that yes it's true sometimes there were the moments when um you can see that in groups that you know the one which you would could say the carnivore uh, one person who's very aggressive and very powerful in in different ways um is just on the strife trying to up himself by downing someone else and um, some people realize that and they sadly enough make sure that someone else is taken instead of them not feeling good about it but still do it i i have seen stuff like that happening so i know that this is true very fitting and i like this idea uh, that hickey had there it's it's a very clever idea of having a look at a school class <laughs> really nice and tim trying to be the bear um, I think he gives too much to him there. He clearly is not the bear. Um, <clears throat> the thing is here, he tries to take himself out of this equation by being a loner, by being um, a creature that doesn't interact with, with others. But then bears are respected and he is not. That's the thing. Bears are feared and he is not. Bears are powerful and at least at the moment he is not. So he tries to write himself, his own position, into something more neither positive, which is not real. He's possibly, I don't know, something else. You know, more like they just don't want to interact with him because he's just weird. So you cannot up yourself, you cannot improve your own level by um, pushing down someone that is so disliked by anyone, as it seems, that they would be more like, why do you interact with him at all? So, I think he's no beer. Sorry. Um, then we went into this... Um, we had a short moment with the, with the teacher again, uh, who I now know is the guidance teacher, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so, it's kind of like the same setup in the last uh, as in the last episode. Um... She gave us a little bit more information, not very much about Yuki. Uh, so that made sense as well, that she is too often right, which is a problem. 
in society that is true if you are um not fitting into the role that everyone thinks you should have you will get problems so if you are um a kid and you are a kid who knows too much already who is too clever already then you might encounter people who take that positively and try to push you into becoming um even more than you are trying to um bring you to better schools and whatsoever you know or you might encounter people who are just downing you because they are kind of afraid for their own position um it's the thing um that you know that there are people who will talk bad about you then you know and it seems i guess that she had this encounter in the past of people <clears throat> not being positive about her brighter side um and then we had yui so interestingly um it is yui that has more neither the normal interaction in class so she is being f funny and entertaining as she is the one that um we had in a in a moment of class interaction where she was in trouble so she is one of those who tended to follow the flock who tended to follow the group the um in this case the main group in the class around this girl named yumiko this blonde girl who at least to the outside world is very full of herself you never know what's going on inside right um and she uh, uh yui was one of those girls who just followed along and said yeah whatever you say you are right i will do as you want i will bring you your tea you know stuff like that so bit part of servant following flock trying to take a bit from the glory and shine it on yourself this kind of thing but always a follower not one making steps or setting steps um and she wants to change that and that is a big thing um i really like it so she um first thing she tried to move away by saying i have something else to do okay which got her into the trouble um and i misinterpreted it in the f way that i thought um she wanted to give the cookies that she made to her i mean it would have been interesting as well um but no she wanted to have uh, lunch whatever with uh, yuki without saying it and she got in trouble for trying to move away from a group where she's a part of although she doesn't want to be anymore um i have to give it to Higi that he really tried to help and she realized that as well the reaction was awesome you know the striking snake and his reaction of just moving away sitting down not um interacting anymore so no bear at all um it was a good one however still so he he even is aware of the fact by saying i have no positive no sympathy in this moment i don't want to help i don't need to help he talks to himself that he shouldn't be doing it so he knows it would be the right thing to stand up he tells himself kind of don't do it it's stupid you know but still he does he has a good heart that's a nice thing to see and he's clever enough to even see it and he runs into the danger and then shies away from it so at least he tries he's not the hero that fulfills his duty yet um and then we have yuki coming in who is like the i wouldn't call her the perfect example of the hero there because she's pretty mean <laughs> as well she um yeah she completely completely bashes this group down um yumiku especially she com i mean she's brutally honest you cannot deny that brutally honest and it's kind of entertaining unless you're the person who gets to hear it um so i don't know what yumiko is thinking inside and i kind of expect her to be someone in this season to come along and ask for help herself because maybe she's trapped in this kind of role as well we don't know we will see it will be interesting to have that um and then they leave you know uh and but they leave in yui gahama first to have like a last conversation and they are both both two standing outside and listening 
So, and there's, in my opinion, a very strong moment for Yuga Hama, um, because she's able to put into words what she's thinking about and the changes that she is going through. So, she, and her, as I said, a strong moment for her, she realized that she doesn't want to be a follower anymore. She wants to be someone who is able to say what she thinks and make her own steps. By doing so, she is following again, you know, she's following Hiki and uh, and Yuki, but they she's following to a way where she can find her own way. It's a very strong moment, in my opinion, and I like it, because it's not only that she made this decision, but she's even able to put it into words, and that's a good thing. Um, and then she, uh, you know, bashes down Hiki because he's the only one left standing outside. And in my opinion, he would have moved along. He wouldn't have stopped there and listened. He stopped there because Yuki was standing outside. And then Yuki left and left him alone standing there. Now he he looks like the creep who was listening. I'm not sure if um, if that was on purpose by Yuki Noshita. Long names. But it was very clever. And we uh, have the ending of this scene with the two girls leaving and him standing alone in the rain again. So, that's already a good thing. Uh, there, was always, there was already a lot of interaction there, a lot of cleverness, I liked it. And then we meet, once again, the wrong direction. This guy. Okay, he is weird. There's no denying it. He is weird on a, on a completely upper level, but he's entertaining and uh, he somehow has to be able to survive. So I guess um, somehow he's still able to survive in this world. Um, so this eighth grade syndrome, he thinks of himself as a character that doesn't really exist, performing magic and everything, you know. And sees Hiki as um, maybe godlike creature, more like I think more like a comrade. And he says it himself: "You're my comrade." Um, I think it's a very own way of finding friendships. And in the end of the episode, we see them again together um, at this. I think it is a tennis club now. Um, so he came there for that, but he had the novel already with him, so he knew there was more. He already knew somehow it was more about helping and not so much about him appearing there to take Hiki and take him with him. So he really came there for to ask possibly Hiki to read his novel and now he lets ev uh, all the three of them read it. And I'm still not sure if Yui didn't read it. In the beginning it didn't seem like very much, but then she was so sleepy in the uh, in the room there that I think Maybe she read it over the day, you know, during class and in the breaks, because she felt like I should have read it. Just saying, I see this option. So, he has this novel, very interesting, and um, it gets destroyed. I mean, totally. By everyone. Um, that was <laughs> kind of entertaining to see, but it might have been very hard for him. But he steps up, and I really like that. He steps up the game and says, Okay, I'll write another one. Um, so, writer syndrome. He had a reaction. I mean, if you write a novel, if you paint something, if you draw, if you, I don't know, craft something. Um, sure, the best reaction would be like, It's awesome. It's great. We love it, you know? But if you're, um, if you're, an artist who you want to inspire emotions. So why not the emotion of um, jealousy from, from a book? The emotion of hate towards a book. I hate these characters, but still you feel something. You might hate this character in the book, but you feel something. As long as you don't hate the book, you know? Um, so uh, disgust to a character or to a story might be something that is an emotion that you inspire. You just have to look out why and that you are not the one who's being disgusting. So um, he made, he created emotions and then that is a beginning. 
Now he should try to learn to create the emotions he wants and fit it to characters. I think he's on a he's on the right way because if he really has this inner fire to just wanting to write more, good for you. Just go for it. Um we had a short interlude um with this dog at um at the street in the end and I really see that there might be more coming like that about the future of Hickey. So <clears throat> there has to have been um a bicycle accident somewhere in the past including a car and a barking dog so just guessing it was either him or someone he liked um and there's there are more and more hints towards that there is a background and past story about hickey that we will learn of i guess um why he is a loner why he acts the way that he does i think there's more to it and that's interesting to see in the future. Um, <clears throat> I think that's it, more neither. Yeah. Um, about Hickey, he is... And, and I think you can see it in this episode very good. Um, he acts to the outside world like he's not interested, like he doesn't care, like he is negative and, and moody. Don't know. Um, <clears throat> but we had multiple things in this episode on already that show he's not. He did try to stand up. He couldn't finish it, but he at least tried um, against those pressing down on others. He um, is reflecting the world around, is trying to find his own position in it. So he's not finished with that. He did read the novel, although it was boring as it seems and not good, and he did read it to the end. So for this club and for someone else he did something, um, which is out of the ordinary. I mean, that's a lot he did there. Um, he goes to this club, he goes to school. He really tries to help people, because we can see in the end he is training with... Um, Sayomokuza It's the grey haired guy here. So um he went there and they are interacting and they're kind of friendly with each other. So he is a good person inside. He just tries to hide it. The question is why? What happened in the past? Why is he the way he is now? I guess we will learn. So that's it from me this time. I hope you liked. As always, feel free to comment, like and subscribe. Until the next time, my name is Relax and Panic, goodbye and out.